Hi everybody, my name is John Orr. I'm a software engineer on Google's Open Online Education team. In this video, I'm going to be demoing for you the new features for internationalizing courses, which we added in Course Builder 1.7. I'm going to start by looking at a sample course and at the problems with localizing even a very simple course. Then I'll talk about how Course Builder solves these problems with its new translation console. I'll talk about managing translations through the life cycle of the course as content evolves, and then about how to outsource translation, first by authorizing translators to access specific content, and then by exporting course content and importing translations. Here's a very simple course which we're going to work with. It's got a course landing page with an introduction to course, a video. It's got only one unit, with a couple of lessons in it, some text content in one of the lessons, and a quick self-test multiple choice question, and then another lesson that has some text and some mathematical notation. Even for a very simple course like this, there's a fair amount of complexity if you want to do a good job of translating it into other languages. To get a properly localized course, you need a workflow so that all of the course content is translated. That means the titles, the lessons, the questions, the different parts of multiple choice questions, the videos and the images all have to be translated, and at the same time, all the structure of the course has to be preserved. To see this working, let's return to the same course where I've now added a French translation. Notice the new locale picker at the bottom of the page, which the student uses to set their preferred locale. When I change it, you see that the course at once switches to its French version. By the way, I need to apologize for the translation I made into French, which I'm sure is full of terrible mistakes. Pardonnez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Notice now, as we step through the course, look at the course landing page with its title, with the video, into the first lesson, the multiple choice question, and the second lesson, all the text has changed, while the structure of the course is the same. The way this works is you first create your course in your base locale, which in this case is US English, and then add other supported locales and manage their translations using the new translation console. I'm now logged on as the course instructor, and so I have access to the instructor dashboard. Here you can see the course content in the default locale of English, so here, for example, is the text of the first lesson. Notice a new localization tab, I18N, on the instructor dashboard. And if we jump in here, we can see a list of all of the various course components. The settings for the course homepage, the first unit, and the two lessons, together with our multiple choice question, what is analysis, are all of them here and they all of them have translations into French. For example, for the course homepage, we can look at the translation and see a two-column format with the organization name that's offering the course, the course title, the course abstract in two separate paragraphs, the URL for the course video, and the link for the privacy policy. Notice also how the course structure has been flattened. Whether it's different paragraphs of the course abstract, or the course title, or if we jump over to the multiple choice question, whether we're looking at paragraphs of text or sections of a multiple choice question, we always use the same two column format. So from the translator's point of view, they just have to focus on translating the content on the left hand box into the content on the right hand box. Notice also that anything to do with markup or links or styling is presented as an opaque tag here. So the mathematical analysis was highlighted on the left hand side and so the translator also has to ensure that it's highlighted 
on the right hand side. To see how this works in more detail, let's add in a new locale, say German, and add in some translations, and then we can also see what happens as the course content changes as the course progresses. So to translate the course into German, the first thing that we need to do is to add German as a supported locale. We start at the instructor dashboard and go into the course settings, and from there into the internationalization tab. And you see that currently the only available locale that's supported is French. Let's go into the edit mode and add a new locale where we will pick German and we'll mark it as unavailable, meaning that it's still not yet available for students to view content in. Now when we go back to the main translation panel, we'll see that German has been added as a locale and the progress indicator shows which of the course components have got translatable content which hasn't been translated yet. Now, for example, if we go into the course homepage settings, we'll see that we've got translatable content that needs translations. So here I have a translation of mathematical analysis, and the course builder team, I'll just take over unchanged. So after I've entered some translated content, I've got partial progress. I'll save that and back in the translation panel I can see that I've got partial progress here. Let's go over to the course itself and now I can see that I've got German locale available. I marked the German locale as unavailable to students, but because I'm an instructor role here, I can see content that's partially translated. And here, the one translation that I've made so far is the course title, which now shows up in German. By the way, you probably noticed that although the course title was the only thing I translated into German, other parts of the page appear in the new locale automatically. All the standard headings and button labels such as the registration button and the student links in the navbar are pre-translated in Course Builder. Now another scenario that we need to handle is the quite likely possibility that course content is going to change after you've had your translation done. So let's suppose that the course title is going to change at the last minute from math analysis to Math Analysis Part 1. Now if we save this and go to the translation panel, we'll see that the course homepage, which had previously been marked as done in French, is now yellow and in progress. And if we click through, we'll see that everything is still current except for the course name which has now been marked as changed. If we decided that the present translation was still acceptable in French then we could click the accept button or of course if we want to update it then we'll add in a translation and save it. And in this way you can do incremental revisions to your course translations. Now in many cases, it's going to be different people who write the course content and who translate it, and so it's important to have a workflow for translation that's separate from the editing and management of the course. We've added two features to Course Builder to facilitate this. A translator role, which grants only translation-specific access to the instructor dashboard, and also the ability to export text for translation and then import translations into Course Builder. Let's look first at setting up the translator role. Starting on the instructor dashboard, click on the new roles tab. Initially, there's no roles set up. We're going to add roles for a German translator and a French translator. If we create a new role, which will be called translator German,
whose role is to translate content into German, then the translator will need to have the access to all of the locales to see draft content, which hasn't been made publicly accessible yet. We'll need to access the translation dashboard and we'll need to have access to edit the translations into German. We set up this role and in exactly the same way we set up a role for the translator into French. Granting much the same permissions but having access only to translating into French. Once we've created some roles, we add user accounts to the roles. So for example, I'm going to add a user to translate in French to the French role. Now I'm going to log out and log in with the user that I just created to work as the French translator. And you see that although this user isn't an instructor, they still have a link to the dashboard, but the only tabs that they can access on the dashboard are localization, help and support. And the only locale which they can edit is the French locale. Another approach is to download the course content as a new GetText PO file, which is a common format for bundling translations. A translator makes a translation of all the content, which you then upload back into Course Builder. To do this, you start at the translation panel and click Download Translation Files. You can choose which locales you want to download, and you can choose whether you want to download only incremental changes or all translatable items. When you download the files, you get a zip file, and if you open up the zip file, you'll find you get a folder with your locale and a single PO file in it. And for each item in the course, this PO file contains the original English version of the item and a place where the translator, either directly with a text editor or more likely with a translation tool, will enter in their translation for the text. Once the translator is finished, then you take the file that you get back and you go back to the translation panel to upload the translation file here. So in summary, new tools in Course Builder 1.7 enable running internationalized courses by supporting switching locales, providing a translation workflow for content which is independent of the course structure, giving tools for incremental updates as the course progresses, and introducing roles and import-export of PO files as a way of separating responsibilities between content creation and translation. Thank you very much for listening to the video and I hope you enjoy the new features of Course Builder 1.7.